What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Log On Games podcast for March the 5th. With me today, you can find him everywhere at X user X. We have Matthew with us on the podcast. I don't have my symbols up. I'm sorry, but I'll clap. Why? Because the worst. they're the in worst. this thing, container thing. Mm. Yeah. How's it? How's it hanging? What you been playing? Oh, I've been playing uh, Remnant with you, which is a very fun game, mm-hmm. and it's also free on free, free on PS. Is it just PS Five or is it on both? It's on both. I would assume both. Yeah, I would assume um, all the PS. It's a except for the... it's a really fun game, and it's a mashup of like all all kind of. There's so many different times we played just in the five hours or whatever we played where we've gone. This reminds me of this game. This reminds me of this other game. So it's just a yeah. mashup. That's really fun. And then I'm uh, in anticipation for the baseball season. I've been playing some MLB. So baseball. Are and they baseball, having baseball good. season at like normal? Or are they doing something weird this year? It's basically normal. Yeah. Gotcha. I much, think we're much. having spring training games. Yeah, they're in spring training right now. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. thought you were watching the Braves games, Andrew, but I guess not. God no. <laughs> Said I watch my NBA team lose every night, which is way more fun. <laughs> it's way more fun when you pay for league pass to watch your team lose <laughs> yeah uh, okay with us as well you can find her everywhere you can even read her freaking hoodie if you're watching this in video form but you need to add another f so uh you can find her at fluffy monkey across the land twitches and seas we have braylon with us on the podcast today hello how's it going <laughs> it's going swell how are you Doing good. Nice day today. What have you been playing? What have I been playing? I have been playing a lot of Animal Crossing recently. Ooh. You getting those Mario items? I did. And I maybe made a secret area that you can only get to via pipe that mm. is like a little mini Mario level. That's pretty it's cool. It's been fun. That's pretty yes. cool. Lots of time cool. traveling. Well, you know. So you've been like Back to the Future <laughs> and Mario Party all in one. And Mario Party. Yeah. Mario. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's a party. Something Mario. Mario, I don't know. Mario Party's always a party. Well, uh, let me true. bring up my notes here so I know what the heck I'm going to say. Uh, this is I know little... that you said, let me bring up the notes here, but it sounded like you said, let me bring up my nose hair. Let me bring up my and... nose hair. my nose hair. So I know what I'm talking about. Exactly. Uh, well, but this is, yeah, this is the Log On Games podcast, it's a weekly show in which our host discuss a variety of of gaming news topics from new games, big announcements, events, all the things that could be a part of gaming, uh, and so much more. Sometimes we talk about movies, you know. That's it, just games and movies, I guess. Um, New episodes upload every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you want to listen to us, you can. And we are also on YouTube. And for the second week in a row, you can see our faces. So That's true. That could be good. That could be bad. Depends on who's on. Depends on if you hate my face or not. Is anybody it's else? Next, I was going to say it's the next step in getting Rebecca Black. So oh I was going to say sometimes we talk about Rebecca Black on here. That's mm-hmm. true. That's not true. This is it's one of those sometimes. times. It's very, it's very often we it's, talk. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's rare if we go an episode without mentioning Rebecca Black. This is true. I so, hope I don't let that happen. Do any of you, when you look back on whether you're like Twitch streaming or whatever, do you like hate your voice and hate how you look when you see and hear yourself? No. I like watching myself. I like listening to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's not that. Mine is the music thing. Songs I've written or recorded, like listening to old band CDs and stuff like that. It's like, ooh, I don't know about that. I don't like listening to myself sing. No. Mm, that is different. I like singing. I I don't like listening to it. Yeah, I like singing. But I love to watch my VODs. I don't know if that's weird. I don't know. I don't know. See, (laughs) when I look back at old music that in bands I do, I I love it. So it's weird. I'm like, yeah, this was a jam back in the day. But if I see my hear myself like when I'm editing and stuff, I'm like, good God, get this idiot out of here. Why does he talk so (laughs) weird? Why does he say um so much? Oh, I'm like, um, like, that's me. Wait, that's me that that's doing it. When I record speed builds, I'm like, why? I listen to them. I'm like, why do I say um so much? <laughs> Can't control it. Oh, what what a time. What a time to be. Other alive. people don't notice as much as you do. That's true. I hope. I hope. Well, we'll find out if our viewer count goes to the pot. I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to look it up right now. I think 
YouTube wise, last week was our best week. So maybe people, maybe it was Jason. Maybe people like Jason's face. Maybe. Or maybe Jason just watched it a bunch of times. <laughs> That's Jason. He's just going, man, I love my face. Oh my gosh. It was, it was his wife. And then also he made his kids watch it over and over. Yes. Everybody can come in. Like, family, we, family movie night. We want to watch Bob the Builder. Oh no. No, we're this watching. is what you're watching. I had a friend that watched the podcast last week and let me know, hey, it's video now. And I was like, that's funny that you knew that before I even did. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, somebody in your stream was saying that they watched That was it who too. it was. was yeah, that? Ludwig. <laughs> so we were trying to do video platforms like before this, but it costs money and it's, it's like $40 a month or something ridiculous to make it like easy where it's just like you send the link out and stuff. And Zencaster, which is what we use to record, for those who didn't know, um, it's like super easy to use. And right now it's free because it's COVID and stuff. But they had a video beta going for a long time, since basically since we started this last year. But it was invite. It wasn't invite only. It's like they only let a certain amount of people in. So you like sign up and then you just wait for them to email you. And they emailed me like a week before the open beta happened. So like, congratulations, you've made it to the closed beta. And then by the time the podcast came around, it was already like in it. So I was like, well, thanks, I guess. But we'll try it out now anyway. And so, yeah, comment if you're watching this on YouTube and let us know how it is. Let us know if you hate it or not. Uh, well, let's move on here. Again, we have, um, should we do listener questions now or at the end? I say we just do it now. Yeah. Do half of this, the question now and then the other half at the end. That makes sense. Um, if you want to get your question or topic in, you can follow us at Log On Games on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, wherever it is you want to follow us at. Shoot us a message, leave a comment, whatever. I usually tweet out and put on our Instagram story if you have any questions, um, like a day before. So do that, and we will get your question on the show. Um, and as I say that, um, the question we have is via text, so it's not even <laughs> Twitter or Instagram. <laughs> but um, our boy, our boy Tanner, oh, Tanner. He's, done, he's done Twitter questions before. I think his Twitter is at Aqua Wolverine. Yes. Um, he says, "Be sure to talk about the Apex trailer." Matt, I don't, Matt, oh, I, don't, I, don't see I don't know if you've seen mm -hmm. the Apex trailer. When did uh, it come out? Today. Ooh, I did not. Um, let me bring it up because it's like a, it's a, it's it's a, it's a beefy one. Patch wise, at least. Uh, okay. Apex patch. Here we go. Okay, so basically, it's like one. It's like an event, like they do the like the event they just had, which was the whatever collectors event thing. You know how they do it. This one's via, it's very caustic driven. Yeah, mm. You know where the water tower is? Caustic's the worst. You know where the water tower is in Kings Canyon? Mm hmm That's basically like a whole caustic area now. Okay. So take that as you will. Is um, the water tower still there? No, it's not. It's caustic there. Um, I, I can't figured maybe it was a water tower full of caustics. Gas. The in the trailer, there's caustic gas freaking everywhere. Like comes out from the floors and stuff. So if you're like in it, I guess, and someone hits the button, it's just death everywhere. Um, That's crazy. That sounds awful. They also nerfed caustic quite a bit, which is maybe why they're doing <laughs> the event. They're like, listen, he's not as good now, so we're gonna do this event to celebrate how not good he is this anymore. Is how, this is how we're apologizing. Uh, they basically take his gas and it does less damage and it takes longer to get its ult and stuff like that. But there's a lot I'm of interesting okay things. If you are an Apex person, I encourage you to go look up the patch notes because they do. Uh, there's like a new item um, that's going to be in like the main games and everything. It's like a it's a shield that you put down when you're in the circle, like the circles like in you or you're in the circle, or whatever, and it hurts. Mm -hmm. And you can put the shield down and it like protects you from the shield. And you can heal faster and revive faster and stuff like that in the shield. So okay, it's, it's interesting. interesting. That's uh, pretty sweet. And then there's a bunch of like weapon and hero like balance and balance changes and stuff like that. So it looks cool. 
if you're interested, go just look up the Apex patch notes because it's a it's a beefy one. Here's a tip: when you're looking up Apex packs, Apex patch notes, <laughs> beware that Google might change it to Alex patch notes because that's what just happened to me. Is that different? Alex it, patch notes. Yeah, is what's way different. what's different in the world of Alex's? I don't it? know. I quickly <laughs> changed it to Apex. <laughs> if you're, someone's named Alex and there's like, ah, dang it, I gotta update. I gotta update. Patch. <laughs> <laughs> a new patch came in. <laughs> gonna fix all my <laughs> issues. <laughs> new, new, all your Alex issues. All my Alex issues. We actually do. May we might have a person named Alex Newman that listens to this podcast. So. Oh, Newman, I hadn't talked to him. At if all you time. are listening, let me know how the how the update went. Be good to know. <laughs> All right, well, last week, or the day after the podcast went live, bunch of Pokemon news, and then this week, bunch mm-hmm. of Switch news. Um, so we are going to get into the thick of it real quick. Like, um, I'm going to read a little bit of this from GameSpot and then pass it off for thoughts. Um, this is as of March 4th, which is today. It is today. At 11.48 this morning. Uh, an upgraded Switch model featuring an OLED display from Samsung, as well as supported, as well as support for 4K resolution when docked, is reportedly set for a reveal by Nintendo later this year. The model, according to Bloomberg, will unveil will be unveiled this year, and Samsung will begin mass production of the seven-inch screen as early as June. In handheld like that. in handheld mode, it will be sticking to more of a modest resolution. The OLED display panel will output at 720p resolution, which is the same that it is now. Uh, according to Bloomberg, which cites people familiar with the plans, Nintendo is said to be working to maintain an interest around the Switch as well as continue to sell software competitively against Xbox and PlayStation. Um, reports of a more powerful version of the Switch have been floating around for quite some time. In January, a data miner noted that a firmware update issued by Nintendo references an upgraded Switch console codenamed Aula A U L A. How do you say that? This Aula. This, up, this upgraded mod <laughs> model allegedly uses Mariko Tegra X One Plus SoC chip that was implemented with the Switch Lite and updated in 2019 for regular Switch models. Additionally, the firmware mentioned support for a Realtek chip, which has been advertised as a 4K Ultra HD Multimedia SoC. Matthew, you know what that means. I mean, sock. That's that's what it says. <laughs> um, Braylon, what are your thoughts? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like that they're working with Samsung. I don't know about you, but I don't like Samsung electronics. You know a Samsunger? I have a Samsung TV, and it's horrendous. Uh, oh, the animation looks mine. like crap. Like the lines, like when you're watching like an animated show, the there's like the lines stay on the screen for a while, so it like overlaps, uh, and it like always turns off. And if you go to like to buy an appliance, like at a hardware store, um, the employees there will tell you do not buy a samsung dishwasher fridge whatever um because their tech is not good well so i'm interested to see if it will be glitchy if it will you know have any issues like that uh i don't know what they use for the original switch i wonder if that was samsung as well but i don't know i don't have any samsung appliances other than a microwave and our mm-hmm. tv which i adore our tv so i don't know yeah, what I love your TV. I, that's good and i have i have a i had the same uh, what's the word? I'm like the same. I'm cl- my TV is close to what Andrew's is. It's not the same model, but it's in the same like Series. model family. Yeah. Um, I think mine's smaller than Andrew's. Yeah. yeah. When me and Emily but got when me and Emily got married, really I was like, good. listen, we are getting a baller TV because mm-hmm. that's. That Did was... you get? Because they have like a bunch of series that go from like nice to lower end did you get like one of the higher end ones of course yeah i got the okay. at the time mm-hmm. this was i could we, i mean we went all out we don't get the bigger one like i wanted to because at the time we lived in a tiny apartment and a 55 mm-hmm. inch curved tv looks like a freaking movie theater in the apartment that we were in and then we moved yeah. to a house i was like and we look at our tv now look how freaking small it is she's like no it's not <laughs> it's, it's fine it's still too big i was like no big and we don't understand they go up to 85 inches now 
Okay. We have oh. a we have a seventy five inch in our living room, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Good move. Good move. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoy my Samsung TV, but it is one of the higher end ones. It's, I mean, it's like four years, three, three years old now, but it, at the time it was like the top of the line one. So yeah, we bought like a middle of the road one, but it's like three years old also, but we had those problems from day one. So we were like, great. I I think you got a defective TV is what I think, because I have a mid <laughs> Possibly. to mid ish range. I have a mid range one that we got for a low range price on a Christmas deal. Uh, nice. black Fr- on a black friday deal um but yeah, it's so the same series as andrew just a lower lower whatever the mid-range kind of deal and it's awesome i'm Maybe an I lg guy when it co- i think so I th- i'm an lg guy through and through when it comes to tvs mm. um I but like Sony. i've told oh really i've told everybody i've always told everybody lg and samsung have the best picture i, I don't like the way sony does their picture. sony's High end ones are always awesome, but they're always like two thousand dollars more than like a Samsung or an LG. They are high expensive. End one. I agree. Yeah, I just don't like the uh, I don't like the technology they put into their higher hertz stuff. Like you were talking about animated movies, or like um, I had a friend of mine who had one. It was like you could watch a movie and it would go like a significantly higher. Uh, it was running at way higher hertz than the movie was filmed in, and it made everything in the movie look fake, even though it was not an animated movie. It was like a real life. They made Weird. everything look fake. Yeah. I know what you're talking about like a soap oh. opera. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was actually Indiana Jones. So. <laughs> I mean, but it looked like a soap opera. You know how they're filmed all weird? Yeah. yeah. No, it looked like like it was one of those things where you would double take and you're like, am I watching a movie? Or if the graphics on this video game gotten really good? Like, yeah. You just couldn't, you couldn't <laughs> tell kind of what it was. But um, yeah, but the... And I'll say this too, in the in the industry, even though LG is my favorite, Samsung is kind of regarded as the best picture. Interesting. Yeah. So most most that. most Apple products are Samsung screens. Mm-hmm. Really? Well, that makes yeah. me feel better then. So I mean, it's yes. just the parts. It's not like they're the ones integrating anything crazy. It's just the. Yeah, I feel like they're not very good at the like our the smart TV applications on the Samsung. Oh, I ne- yeah, I never the use functionality any of the smart is not stuff. is yeah. I will say, not. out of all the TV, we've had LGs as well, and I was the smart TV stuff on this TV is way better than the others. I don't use either one because it's just yeah. a PlayStation for everything. But I don't. I think the Sam. I think Samsung actually probably has the best smart TV stuff, but it's still not good. I just don't yeah. think anybody has a good. It's like it's You're still right. yeah, it still gets finicky. And I'm just like yes, for sure. Remember Dad's old uh, uh, LG? Well, he still has it. It's a 55 inch that maybe it's bigger than that, but it's got a. Like oh, basically a Wiimote that you can point at the screen and like point around and click on stuff. Yeah. <laughs> really? It's, it's so weird. And then it can take any show and make it 3D. <laughs> Which is what it is. It's just, it is. It's, 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 I've seen Andy Griffith in 3D. I've watched it. It's happened. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> I saw so a, um, maybe it was on Twitter. Maybe it was just like a, a bunch of tweets on Twitter. Or maybe it was an article. I don't remember. About this Nintendo Switch 4K thing. And this is kind of you know, Shibby, one of our co-hosts here. Uh, last January, when it, when we did our 2020 predictions, he predicted that the Switch Pro is just going to be a dock and like nothing else, which is pretty close to what this it says it's going to be. However, the OLED screen, I, wa- I saw a series of tweets of someone being like, why is the OLED screen still 720p and then it's going to be 4K dock? That's stupid. And that's... <laughs> And, that's uh, how they said it. I, that's totally how yeah. they said it. It's just, in my <laughs> process, which was what everybody else's comments were, was like, it's an OLED screen, so it's probably going to look better and clearer than whatever screen they're using now. And it's a 7-inch screen at 720p. 720 looks. on this is really pretty. When I played Breath of the Wild, and like you do the whatever dungeon things, and you get to the end, and, and all the little blue particles go, and you're like, oh. I remember playing that handheld being like, this is absolutely gorgeous. Like this mm-hmm. is incredible, so I don't have any problems with that. And OLED screen is going to save battery life as well, so it should oh, nice. handheld to have a better battery life. One would think. Right. That's always lovely. It, it won't run as hot, and so they don't have to cool it with as much battery life. Um, but I will say the thing I disagree with the article about, or I dis, I disagree in principle, is they. What did you say at the end of there? It said that that Nintendo was trying to like boost sales or keep up with sales that part i get 
mm-hmm. and then it was like the compete with Xbox and, and it Sony. said Nintendo is said to be working to maintain interest around the Switch as well as continue mm-hmm. to sell software competitive competitively against Xbox and PlayStation. See, I don't think that's the case. I think it's the boost of an upgrade so that they can get the ports from Xbox and Sony for the new games. Um, because that's where, to me, that's where the Switch has made its... Uh, mm-hmm. Like, it's gone from being a Nintendo fan's thing to being anybody could grab a Switch and find something they like on it now. Mm-hmm. And that's because Doom came over and Skyrim was the 14th port of Skyrim came over. And, you know, just fill in the blank. There's... Wolfenstein, all yeah, games. all those all those Bethesda games mm-hmm. that came over. Yeah, but not just the Bethesda ones. There's all kind of games that have been ported to the Switch now that you would have never Monster seen. Monster Hunter. On... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like... Well, Monster Hunter was on the 3DS, but was it? I don't. I, I didn't don't know think... that. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think it was on a, one of the Wii's. I don't think. Maybe no, but w- when all these new games that have been announced, Monster Hunter Rise is included. Like the trailers mm-hmm. look really good, which makes you think mm-hmm. like. A lot of people, and myself included, were like, this has to be a Switch Pro game. Like, we'll talk yeah. about Pokemon in a second, but that Pokemon Legends game, it was just like, this has to be like a Switch Pro game or yeah. whatever. So, I don't know. But, I mean, could you imagine if they, like, I don't know, made some cord- some sort of pipeline with Naughty Dog where they could port all the Uncharted and Last of Us stuff over to the Switch, but just run it in oh 1080p? Gosh. Just run it in 1080p and everybody would be happy. There'd be people that would play those games that would yep. be like, I, as a parent, did not know that my kid was playing a game with that stuff in it. But <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, but those, uh, just just to being able to, when Sony or Microsoft drops a game that comes out as 4K, 120 frames like they're doing on some stuff, that the Switch could run it at 1080p at 60. That's plenty fine. So. It's interesting, the last part of this that says um, the 4K chip may be located in the dock instead of the tablet itself. Do we think we're going to get, like when the when the new 3DS came out and there's like those three games that are like only playable on the new 3DS because it needs the extra processing power. If it's going to be like, yeah, you can play, you know, whatever, like, like the next Doom game that came out or whatever. Um, on the new dock on the yeah Probably. but you can only play it yeah on the pro dock or whatever would you only be able to play it docked then no i don't it depends if it's like it says a 4k chip so if it's graphically if it's just yeah. graphics then it shouldn't matter yeah no i think you'd have to put it in the switch because the switch is still gonna need the processing power to run those games that are getting ported over yes yeah, so i'm saying like da- if just doing the dock down, makes it go from 720p to 4k and there's no it doesn't need any extra processing power just to dumb down the graphics if you take it out of handheld but i don't know it's nintendo we're talking about here anything's possible that'll be interesting to see yeah i think it'll be located i don't think they'll put it in the dock my switch is old i have like the one of the first release switches so i'll probably upgrade when it does come out oh yeah for sure myself included um and I haven't touched. I played Animal Crossing, but other than that, I haven't touched it. But we have all these new announcements and stuff. Splatoon being one of them. I got that Octopath when it went on sale like a month or two ago. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Let's do Braylon. Mm-hmm. We were all thinking of you when we did our podcast about this, <laughs> and we talked about Splatoon. What are your What are your initial thoughts? What do you just 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 go at it? Just give me Give me all um, you. Besides being like really freaking excited, um, I'm hype for. It looks like we're getting different spawn points. I love the world, um, like the desert world that I think you're going to be able to interact with. Looks super cool. Um, it gave me like Borderlands vibes. Just I love that they're just going out there. And then the world, like there's always the main lobby, um, like the main little town center, yeah. kind of city center that you're in. So seeing the footage of that it looked absolutely bonkers. I'm blown away i'm so excited do you think there's a single player campaign oh for sure for sure i think the single player campaign is going to be in that desert area definitely Mm -hmm. i I don't know what it's going to be because historically the last two single player campaigns sort of like ended the story so it'll be interesting to see what the new story is like we have all the background on like their history of the people and why they do the turf wars and why there's octolings and octolings lived underground and 
we have all this lore now, so it'll be kind of cool to see what what new lore are we going to get, I guess. Mm-hmm. The real question it, is ketchup or mayonnaise? Oh, gosh. Mayonnaise. Ketchup. <laughs> ketchup. Ketchup's a great answer. What, yeah. what, do you, what do you want to see? I want to see better. I want to see. I really hope that there's freaking voice chat. I don't know if there will mm. be because Nintendo notoriously does not do that, but it would be so helpful for the competitive side. Um, I would love to see better matchmaking. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited for new weapon types. That'll be really fun. New mm-hmm. specials, new sub weapon types. Um, but I really hope that the competitive side of it is a little more wrinkled out. Um, like yeah. for instance, if you go to play competitive now with a friend, it's called league. Mm-hmm. So that's like they have solo queue and then they have league ranks. Well, every mm-hmm. time you play with your friend, you have to play seven placement matches first. And the rounds are only two hours. So you spend 35 minutes, if you do them all really quickly right in a row, doing your placement matches every single time you play ranked. So just stuff like that. I hope yeah, they kind of fizzle out and, and make it better, make it more enjoyable to do the competitive side. Um, yeah. And then I hope for more events outside of Splatfests would be fun. Right. I don't know what, right. but just other, you know, something else. We've had Splatfest for like five years now, so. <laughs> yeah, true. Lots Ready of for some new, new. Yeah, they're fun, but I w- it, it's such a cool world and such a unique game story, you know? I They could do mm-hmm. a lot more with it, I think, so. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I think if I'm Splatoon, I just, I pour all the time and resources into the online uh right? matchmaking the matchmaking and making that a smoother process and um because I mean, they had some cool stuff I, I mean i haven't played it in quite a while what are those things called that were kind of like you uh all the different like waves come at you and you like horde mode oh the thing? salmon run they have like a pve that salmon yeah. run, yeah Super i would love fun. to see more of that i love the pve i think it's it's yeah. really well done i um, think it'd be I think the other thing i'd like to see is for them to make the characters even more asymmetric than they are Mm-hmm. To where, like, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Overwatch in my head, not that far, but to where the characters had were a little bit more different from each other because there are yeah. there are there are differences for sure, but even more so, you know. Yeah, I think that game has a lot of potential too to be like a competitive esport game. Like, mm-hmm. it has a really nice competitive scene with it, and so I I I hope that they do some things to make that just a better experience. Yeah. It's a fun game. We played it. We played it a lot when it first came out. So Splatoon one, um, Splatoon two or two. Oh, nice. So remind me, control scheme. I'm not. Maybe my brain's just farting around. But Mm -hmm. to me, it was like I tried to use. I think I tried to use the pro controller, but it was Mm -hmm. just like not as sharp as I wanted it to be. And so in order to be good at it, you kind of had to do the motion controls handheld. hundred percent. Yeah. Is that the way it was? Do you uh, like that? Yeah. I love it. It's Splatoon one um, was the very first first person or third person shooter, any shooter game that I could actually play. And mm-hmm. it was because of the motion graphics. Like, I don't know why it's really hard to learn double analog sticks like anyone when they first, at least me, when I first picked up the game, like having to move and look now it's second nature. I don't think about it at all. But as a f- the first time I was doing that, it was so hard. And so I could never play games like Call of Duty or Overwatch or that because it was just like such a barrier to learn. So Splatoon, I loved because it was an easier entry for me as a new gamer. Um, and it, I've had other people who have had that same experience, like the motion graphics is helpful if you're not already used to analog sticks. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoy it because I it the mechanics. I've never played another game with as good of motion graphics. Uh, or uh, yeah, that's the mechanics yeah. are motion controls. The mechanics are just I use it mainly for like my left right viewing, not for my up down. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just allows you to make like really tiny adjustments if you're like strafing or if you're aiming. Um, that is easier to do with your hands. I don't know. I personally love that's it. That's what I agree because. When I like those micro movements, yeah. What I, what I remember doing is really wanting to play it on the pro controller, but being like the people that are kicking my butt are using the motion controls. So now I have your, to use the motion controls. You know what your it was? Your pro controller you, didn't have motion controls. It did, but it's weird. Like it's easier handheld because I can just move it with my head than it is like yeah. to be on a screen and be like you know yeah. flopping around everywhere. 
That's what I think I the think. problem is you all need to play inverted, then you won't have an issue. Uh, that's not true. Mm-mm. Don't play inverted. Hey, now. I'm an inverted guy. Okay. No. <laughs> no, no, I am no, because I I use Apple products, so I kind of am because everything for us is backwards. But when it comes to games, whoo! No, I tried no, that. I have I've to. Al- Matt, I've as also a matter of tried- fact, there are games. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, things that we're talking about tonight, uh, I think it was Fall Guys specifically when it came out. I played it like for ten minutes with Andrew and them. They were like, "Yeah, let's keep playing." I was like, "I'm not playing this until they change it." Where they actually have they had no option to change to inverted. I was like, "I can't." Like, give give my controller to somebody who does not play inverted, and they just like spin around and look at the sky. That's what I do if you give me a controller. That, it's <laughs> You're normal. Just like, oh, I spin around and look at the floor. You know, same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say the when they released Fortnite on the Switch, um, it had motion controls, and I was super excited to hmm. try it out. And then the mechanics were all weird and not the same at all as Splatoon. So I was like, this is not helpful. <laughs> Interesting. I, I don't think I used motion controls either on Splatoon when we played. Um, but the only thing I can equate it to, it, kind of like Andrew was saying, you can tell the people that are really good at the game are using them. I can equate that to Call of Duty World at War on the Wii, which is the Call of Duty game that I've sunk the most time into. <laughs> and we played, and we played it a ton online. And obviously it was Wii, and so you wherever you pointed on the screen is where you were shooting or whatever. And you could change the size of the box in the middle of the screen that you know, the invisible box that was your, you know, uh, I forget the term for it, but once you go past that box line is when your screen starts turning instead of you just aiming or whatever. Um, and yeah, we got really good at it. And the more I played that, the more I was like this call of duty is better this way than with a regular controller. Interesting. But there was, there's a learning curve to it for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Real bad at first. Bring back the Real Wii. Bad. No, that's why it's not even going to be a Switch Pro. It's just going to be the Wii. Two, or the Wii 3, I guess. Yeah, the the competitive Splatoon players all use the motion controls. Aren't you surprised that they haven't been like, Splatoon 3 coming also. Get out your Wiimotes. You can use them if you want. <laughs> yeah, that would be... <laughs> That'd be crazy. Well, speaking of games that were announced, uh, we had a big Pokemon event, which we, on our last podcast, tried to guess what we were going to see. We were, we were kind wrong. of somewhat kind of. right, and then we were very wrong, kind of, maybe a little bit. Um, yep. So I'm going go through this. They showed off Pokemon Snap first, which we've all seen it a million times. It comes out April 30th. Get it. Um, I will. And I will. then we I got will. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which are remakes of the DS Diamond and Pearl. Um, I'm also reading this from GameSpot. These games also take place in Sinnoh and... Uh, this being positioned as a set of faithful remakes of the original titles and will release in late 2021. And Game Freak is not developing these said games. Um, They have one of the directors that's helping them out, but this was something I think that Jason talked about last podcast where he wished that Nintendo, Game Freak, whoever, would let other developers develop some of these Pokemon games so that Game Freak can work on other things and we can get more mainline right. core RPG Pokemon games rather than one like every two years or whatever. So mm-hmm. we'll start here. Braylon, you're a Pokemon fan. Yes. Did yeah. you did you play Diamond and Pearl? Do you like it? Are you excited about I the remake? Did play Diamond and Pearl and I'm actually looking at photos now so I could familiarize myself, remind myself. Um this was one of my favorite games as a kid. Um I don't know how old I was. I don't know when it came out, but I loved it. So I'm excited. This should be fun. Are you a are you a grass, fire, water starter? Like which one? Or do you kind of, d- d- does it depend on the game? Historically, it, when I like, so I saw a graphic that somebody made that was like, pick which starter you had in every game. And I had only picked grass once. All the rest mm-hmm. were fire. Yeah, so notoriously here. I'm same fire. Here. But now that I'm older... And I, like, when I was a kid, I would just pick fire and beef up that Pokemon and just plow through all the gyms with my one Pokemon that would mm-hmm. be, like, level whatever. And I never used any of the others. Now, I, like, complete and have a full team. So, when yeah, I played... Um, Pokemon management. Yeah. <laughs> when I when I, when I I played this time, uh, Sword and Shield, I did not pick fire um, because I was like, I'll get a different fire Pokemon later. Interesting. 
I also yeah. don't like the way some of them look. The uh, the new the newer ones. Yeah, they the always newer don't ones look when they good. get to their level three. You're like, that's kind of weird looking. So they're run, they're running out. They're giving yeah. up. That's what yeah. they're doing. Giving up. I'm a, I'm always pick fire starter, but by the end of the game, I have like half, if not more, of my party that's psychic, and or psychic and ghost. Right, because you are psychic, so that makes sense. Because I'm psychic. Want. No, because I like. You know, Psychic Pokemon because they can usually learn like water. Some of them can learn water moves. Some of them can learn fighting mm-hmm. moves or whatever. So that's kind of what I do. If you were going to be in the Pokemon game as a Pokemon trainer, mm-hmm. I feel like you fit the, the look of like a psychic Pokemon trainer. You know, you'd be wearing like all you. black you. and well, you'd have your Pokeball. I, I'm psychic. While he's doing that, I can tell yeah. you <laughs> that we have... Uh, we stopped doing it about four or five months ago when we've been talking about it. We want to start it back up. They uh, Somebody has made a Pokemon D&D oh, like, my. thing where like a whole, it's got its own whole rule book where you can kind of use some D&D stuff, but then it's like all Pokemon or whatever. And I am DMing a game where a bunch of people are going through it, him included. And he does, he's the psychic guy. So It looks, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. I got a big old Mewtwo. You got Where's a big your other Mewtwo? Mewtwo? Uh, I'll show you my other Mewtwo. You'll have to give me a second. Though. I'll find Yep, him. go get your other Mewtwo. Okay. <laughs> you have to find him. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he he is all about that psychic life. But the, the Pokemon D&D thing, way more fun than I thought it would be. It's super Yeah, cool. that sounds awesome. My sister plays D&D, and she's going to um, do a like a single-day practice DM um, game with us, like a single-day campaign. Nice. So I'm going to tell her to look into the Pokemon one because she wants yeah. to get into DMing. So I'm like, ooh. I would play Here a comes... Pokemon D and D version. Yeah, yeah, you can jump day. in with us if you want. Hey, hey this that's is, true. It, okay. This is the real Mewtwo. Andrew has the real one. <gasps> the real know. Mewtwo. The real Mewtwo. Oh, hello! Look at how cute. There's not enough room on this table for him. <laughs> he said, "Dad, why are you holding me like this?" Because he's my yeah. baby. Did, did you have to steal him out of his little hub thing? He was in um, what I like to call parkour mode. Which is either after he eats or after he poops, he does parkours around the entire house. Which is most of the day. Like, for a solid like 10 minutes. My so, cat does that before he poops. Oh, he's he gets the poop Same. zoomies. My dog runs around like too. crazy and then we let him outside and he goes and poops. All right. Go go to your adventures. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, so, Mewtwo appears. Yeah, he, he was in. I opened the door and I looked to the chair on the right and he was all the way down like this. Like, whew. He likes to like be played with very roughly like a dog does. He'll get right in the middle of the living room rug and just get as low to the ground as he can and just look at me like, let's go. My cat does that too. My cat loves to play yeah. rough. But yeah, his name's Weird. Mewtwo. And because he looks like Mewtwo, of course. So he, he is Mewtwo. Yeah. I don't have a Gengar. I used to, I like to have Gengar on my team. I don't have anything that resembles a Gengar that I can show you. I apologize. You're working on it. What would that be? I have something. I have something. Wait. She pulls out a real Gengar. It's not Gengar. It's not Gengar. It's close, though. Kind of close. A little bit close. It is. It's very close. Yeah. It's Haunter. Close to Gengar. I Haunter. I like like Haunter better than Gengar. Also, you're both dumb because I, I pick grass every time, except for sometimes the grass ones are really dumb looking, so I get water. Yeah. Grass is your default? There's always yeah, so many I, well, grass Pokemon for like the first two badges, so that's why I don't get them. Like, I can get it. It's true. A million grass. But the almost every game, the starter grass evolution is way better than the evolution of any other grass ones you can get at the beginning of the game. True. Like, way better. Well, the fire Pokemon but, is usually fire, and then its last form is fire and fighting. So that's what you're going to stick with. I am very much a find something I like and stick with it. Like, if I go to restaurants i get the same thing every time kind of thing and we played pokemon blue back in the day when that was the only pokemon game out and we started with bulbasaur and so i have stuck with it ever since so that's kind of what's your zodiac sign i don't know may 26th whatever oh my the zodiac gosh sign is for that i was literally gonna say are you a taurus and you are <laughs> taurus i don't think so I, i'm pretty sure Wait. it's something different yeah it's gemini i was wrong. yeah that sounds right that sounds right Tells you how much stock I put in that stuff. <laughs> there um, is a. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have anything else. Anything else Pokemon? I have 
another giant Vulpix pop toy. And then mm. have a normal sized Cubone pop toy. I don't think you want me to start grabbing Pokemon stuff. <laughs> I don't have Pokemon pop toys. I don't I have, have enough Pokemon oh, stuff, that's for sure. I have Zarya and Hanzo from Overwatch. I, I have, have a my... lot of Pokemon stuff in my vicinity. <laughs> I've seen on your in, in your Instagram your stream. And there's a there's a guy that I'm friends with in Atlanta that has he's like he has a room that's just if he finds something that's Pokemon out and about, like he buys it and shoves it in this room. So it's just his Pokemon. You know track. you know that whole uh, gotta catch them all thing? Yeah. He really lives by that. He did it. He I was, catches them all. I always joke that <laughs> when I visit Japan I will need to bring like a large suitcase with me mm-hmm. that is empty that will be filled. Have you with seen plushies. the pictures of the Pokemon Center in Japan? I can't. I, can't, I yeah. With I the can't, Mewtwo I can't. like in his I little can't. pod, like as soon as you're going. even even going to the Nintendo store in New York, I'm like always overwhelmed by the amount of Pokemon plushies there, and I don't know what to do with myself or which one to buy. It's very stressful. <laughs> I would recommend you give Tim Tim a try. Really Tim cool. Tim? You played Tim Tim? No. It's, it's really it's pretty cool. much Pokemon, just like with a little bit more multiplayer involved. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. You can, co- you can co-op play it where oh, and it's six. Like the amount of times that we every time we play that game, I'm always like, yeah, I have this Pokemon. I, I mean, Tim Tim. Mm-hmm. Like it's the same game. Mm-hmm. It's just, I it's, promise a, it's, it's the exact same thing. But it's kind of MMO ish a little bit. It's oh um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but if you play co-op with somebody. Then you have your six Pokemon in your list or whatever that you're carrying, six Tim Tim in your list that you're carrying around, and your top three are your top three and their top three are the six that you take into battle together. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah, it's really it's fun. a lot harder though than a, a normal Pokemon game is. Like that's why I like it. You too. die a lot more. You mm. um, you backtrack a lot more because you're like, listen, I don't know how far into this cave I am. I need to backtrack. Go all the way back, heal mm-hmm. up, and then come back because I don't want to waste oh. these potions because they're freaking expensive. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And we talked about that even last week that my biggest issue right now with Pokemon games is the lack of difficulty. Like just a hard mode is yeah. all I want from this. Sword and Shield, I'll say it again. I've said it a bunch of times. Even if it was as simple as a hard mode that says that your experience doesn't share with all of your party, even yeah. if it was just that, then it would make the game better, I think. I I like the easy games. <laughs> <laughs> I like to well, just like turn off my brain and autopilot the games. Right, but even you know? <laughs> I don't feel like it would be that difficult for them. No, like even I with Sword and so. Shield to be like, okay, when you start the game, select normal or hard. Normal is what it is now. Hard is yeah. you don't XP share across all your people. Okay, they already have that in like Mario Odyssey and stuff like that. You can turn on like kid right. mode, and mm-hmm. it like gives you arrows mm-hmm. of where to go the whole time, mm-hmm. which I used. I wonder <laughs> if non. Game Freak made games would do that. Yeah, you know, that'd be interesting to see speaking, if they're a little less handholdy. Speaking mm-hmm. of which, there was one more announcement. Mm-hmm. Pokemon Legends Arceus, Arceus, depending on who you talk to. Um, Arceus is what they said on the thing. They did, Arceus. And it is, I'm going to read from GameSpot <clears throat> again. The biggest news closed out the show, and that is Pokemon Legends Arceus. This is a brand new Pokemon game for the Nintendo Switch that takes place in the Sinnoh region and serves as a prequel of sorts, telling an earlier story that of that of the Sinnoh we know. <laughs> they rhymed. Good job, guys. <laughs> it's set for a release in 2022. It's unclear if there will be two versions of the game as usual uh, or not. So... This was before we ended the podcast last week. We went on the lines of what's the one like your dream Pokemon game? And I said a Pokemon MMO, which this is not, but it, mm-hmm. we're getting there. We're getting there. This is an open world. The only reason I didn't game. say that was because you said that. Yeah. Well, actually, no one really knows what it is yet, but based That's off true. what they showed us and like the camera shots that they straight up used in breath of the wild and also used in this pokemon trailer makes it Mm -hmm. seem like this is very much an open world action it does look very open worldy i don't what do you think about the graphics the the graphics look awful (laughs) i was i'm looking at these photos like yeah when i watched it i was like man this is awesome this is what what i was saying like this has to be a switch pro game kind of thing like is this how it's gonna look handheld and then on like a on an original switch but it's also like a year and a half off well worse graphics is actually promising 
I, I was going to say, do you think it's better that they show us something worse so then, like, next time when they show it to us, we're all like, ooh. Well, well, that, well that, that can always help. That's true. But I was thinking more so along the lines of worse graphics means you have more things to load. And therefore, you have to do it dumbed down graphically, which means an actual for real open world instead of like Good point. it's supposed to seem open world kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, which, which, which I'm hoping. There's a couple of questions I have about it. One looks very promising, but what's the end goal? What is the what's the point of the game? I like the how point of the game. It too? says that you have to build the first Pokedex. Like Pokedex yeah, right. don't even exist. Like that's pretty cool. Yeah, right. you get the the pokeballs are like wooden. I forget where I saw it, but it's like it looks. It's a oh, wooden yeah. pokeball, and then when you catch it, steam's come steam comes out of the top <gasps> of it. Yeah, and their outfits are so cute and like old fashioned. I like so, this. That's the Sims answer if I've ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> this is cute. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, it looks really cool. I I do agree. I like I like the the look of, like the graphical choices they made with the town, how the town looks, and then the people. Um, uh. But I just, I want to know what the end goal is. If the end goal is just to catch all the Pokemon, that's fine if you make it a really long and hard process for something. Well, you know what I mean? It, it's called... It does... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, it's called Pokemon Arceus, which for those who aren't uh, as well-versed in Pokemon lore, Arceus is basically like God. Like, he created everything. He created... He was the first legendary Pokemon, and he created... Everything from the other Pokemon to humans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I assume there will be a story based off that somehow, and how Pokemon started and came to be, and the world itself came to be. Um, mm -hmm. And then I don't know. I get. I assume they're trying to breath the wild the Fi Pokemon. That's the vibe that I get. Totally. Like. But I don't know. There's a lot of questions that have to be answered. And yeah, the graphics yeah. kind of look did questionable. Did they say that it was only Pokemon from the Snow Region other than the starters? In the because... long gone era of the Sinnoh region. So there yeah. could be other Pokemon. I can see you. Oh, I can't see him anymore. Can't see you He's anymore. Gone. Um but yeah, I just so inter I thought that was interesting that they're doing the. Um, I'm trying to look up which which the starters actually were. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's um, Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawott. Yeah, it's it's Rowlet yeah. It's different starters from, from every from everything. Yep, correct. Cyndaquil is from Johto, and Oshawott is from yeah. Unova. So that makes me think that they don't have to stick with just the No Region. They could throw in a couple others here and there. Mm -hmm. Um which I think makes for a better game. And that means probably more MMO-ish type thing, if that's the case. I do think that the main objective of the game is going to be creating and completing the Pokedex. Sure. Which that's what I'm they're okay making with. it seem like, yeah. I'm okay with if they make that very difficult. And I mean, by difficult, I mean time-consuming. Like, I don't want... This is not a game I want to complete the Pokedex in, you know, 15 hours. Yeah, like, there, no, there needs I couldn't to be... see them doing that. If they're going to make it open world, they need to make it to where there is at least a handful that are like, these are the 10 that are going to take you a long time to find for yeah various, various reasons. Well, I'm excited about it whenever it Me does. too. Whenever it does happen. Because you would... What's, what starter are you going to pick? Uh, Cinequil, 100%. Yeah, same. Me too. <laughs> 100%. Are you going with Rowlet? I don't know. I'm looking them up now. I don't remember. I, I, you can't say names. I do know what Cinequil looks like. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. They're <laughs> not my favorite. None of them are my favorites. We'll say oh, that. I like them. None of them are favorites. Well, don't tell them that because then they won't obey you. That's true. <laughs> um, That's true. I'm, my biggest question is that if this game is successful, do they go back? Like it's the next Game Freak mainline Pokemon game, back to like Sword and Shield kind of stuff, or they are going to continue with the Legends theme and do whatever's next, like Pokemon Legends Mewtwo or whatever. So I have a feeling that because their main <clears throat> player base, like of the early games, like we're all adults now, 
I have a feeling they're going to like try and get the nostalgia buys. And we're mm-hmm. going to see a lot of like, let's explore this old game in a new way. That's what we were saying Legends. last week on the podcast was like, I'm Jason was saying how he wanted a new gen game done by somebody that's not game freak. And I was like, I really don't care who does mm-hmm. it, but I'm sick of like, there's no reason to have like a hundred new Pokemon every two years. Mm-mm. Like, we don't need it. You can make 10 no. to 20 new ones if you want to, and then just throw a combination of everything else in there well, and make a yeah. good, better game. They have Pokemon Snap. They obviously are making a new one of. I said it last week, since you took the MMO idea, and I really, that would have that would have been my dream game. I would say my dream game would be another trading card game. I love the one on Game Boy. They have like so many different, like I'm not a fan of Coliseum or Stadium. It's not for me, but people love those games. You could make another one of those. They have a lot of different things they could redo or reimagine. Um, and then you have still a whole bunch of young Pokemon fans that have come in via Pokemon Go to the Let's Go series, and you can mm-hmm. still make something for them if you continue to use non-Game Freak. If Game Freak's doing everything, then you're going to get a new game every couple years, <laughs> yep. whatever it is. So Hopefully this other studio is doing the remakes. They'll just continue mm-hmm. to do remakes, or they'll transition to something else, um, mm-hmm. which... I don't know if you guys know this or not, but somebody in this podcast room right now got Pokemon Diamond and Pearl on our Fantasy Critic League, and his name is me. So I'm really banking on this new developer to not screw it up. (laughs) That's true. I think it'll be well done. It looked really well done. Um, I'm still holding out for Boyfriend Dungeon. So, Um, (laughs) But my question is, in... Pokemon always does this thing. Like now you have brilliant diamond and shining pearl. Yeah, brilliant. And in twelve years when they remake these, is it gonna be like even more brilliant diamond? Super yeah, brilliant. Really shining pearl. <laughs> Super even more <laughs> shiny, pearl shiny pearl than the last shiny pearl edition. Exactly. Well exactly. I'm excited to see what, what becomes of it. It says early twenty two early twenty twenty two. I call bull crap on that. It's probably going to be delayed, especially like seeing how the game looked. Um, mm-hmm. It's definitely, I, it w- I wouldn't be surprised if that's a fall 2022 game. And that's like, you know, the big one. But yeah, at the same time, it's like this new Switch coming out, like Splatoon, Breath of the Wild 2, Pokemon Legend Arceus. Like these are the kind of games that I assume they had the new Switch in mind for. So, mm-hmm. Metroid. Metroid. Maybe maybe that's why we haven't heard anything about Bayonetta or Metroid or stuff like that. It's because they're just maybe waiting so. for this. Um, yeah. We'll end out the podcast here. Um, Braylon, give us a Sims update. Oh, we, we need a noise. Yes. We need a, like an alert noise for that one, Braylon. Sign. Here's our Sims update. <laughs> <laughs> that's the... <laughs> There we go. There we go. Um, Yes, we actually have a lot of exciting things happen in the world of Sims. Um, It was the Sims' 21st birthday recently. Pretty crazy. Now they can get wasted. I know. The Sims can get drunk. (laughs) Um, (laughs) They've been doing it for years. Yeah, right? The first game had stripper cakes and go-go cages and all kinds of wild stuff. Um, Stuff I did when I was one. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, Like we all did. And um, anyways, the uh, it was pretty cool. They actually worked with um, – so last year, I'll give you a little update. Last year for their birthday, they gave us a free hot tub, and everybody was like, okay, thanks, cool, sweet, we don't care. So this year, people, people were like – they rioted kind of on uh, Twitter last year. So this year, they worked with 21 different custom content creators of The Sims and came out with 21 different items that they updated in the base game for free, which was super cool because it was a bunch of new clothing, build items, all kinds of new stuff. So that was pretty exciting. Uh, the community was really, really happy about that. Um, they're kind of, I think, learning to listen to people, which is nice, um, but it is EA, so, you know. Um, <laughs> and then the cool new thing is that we have new expansion packs now. So previous Obviously, The Sims has um, expansion packs, which are like big game changing. They're like $50. And then you have game packs, which is a little less impactful on your game. Those are like 20 bucks. And then we have stuff packs, which is like what stuff. it is, stuff. Um, and those are 10 bucks. So they recently just announced Kits, which is a new type of DLC that is allowing essentially for more niche content. So they came out with three kits. There is a gameplay kit, 
a build buy kit and a create a sim kit. So we got like a throwback 90s outfit, little bundle that you can buy. We got a country kitchen kit, which is a country kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then we got a bust the dust kit, which uh, includes, this sounds so silly saying this, it includes <laughs> vacuums, <laughs> vacuums, and you can now vacuum your house and there's little dust bunnies. And if you don't vacuum your house, the dust bunnies eventually spontaneously combust and burn your whole house down. So nice. Um, Clap I'm excited. Bunny behavior. It, the Sims is such a, a diverse community of people that everybody wants so many different things in their game. So I think that this will really allow for a lot more niche content um, because mm -hmm. it's like smaller little chunks. So I'm excited to see what it what we'll get in terms of more content, but also probably means that Sims 4 is not going anywhere soon mm -hmm. um, with the fact that they just came out with a whole new category of DLC. So yeah, very exciting stuff. Did you get all three? I haven't gotten any yet, actually. <laughs> Dust bunnies <laughs> sound like. Yeah, which one? Which one are you gonna get first? Probably the country kitchen because it's the build stuff, which I want. There's some cool. some cute stuff in there, but well, I, I will probably buy the of... dust one Dust. too. I know you've been doing want... a lot of people too, like creating. People yeah, and yeah, I do and outfits too, so I'll probably buy them all at some point. But yes, the yeah, dust bunnies sound like they were playing Animal Crossing, and they're like, "How can we take the cockroaches to another level?" Yeah, right. someone yeah. was like, "What if the exactly. cockroaches could explode and burn your house down?" They're like, "Let's do it." Mm -hmm. Yep, just like that. I have heard reports though of people putting like vacuums in their Sims inventory, and then they'll like go to um, dinner, and then they're just like vacuuming at the restaurant and <laughs> vacuuming all over. <laughs> this needs to be vacuumed. Yes, this restaurant yes. sucks. It yeah, created a, a new mental illness inside the world, the world of Sims, where everything has yes. to be vacuumed, or they will. <laughs> Jump Let me leave my date room. and go vacuum. <laughs> I'm gonna have to stop you right vacuum there. Cafe? I have to vacuum this room. I have to vacuum. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, we did our listener questions, so I think that's going to about wrap up this podcast. Do we have any final thoughts on anything, Matthew? I'll start with you before we end this up. Mm, no, I think there's a lot of exciting news with, especially with the switch uh, thing. We just need more. I need more deets, um, but like I said, I, th I think they need to they need to keep up with the uh, the new consoles and just in order to be able to have the ports come over. Yep. So. The something I read that which was like it kind of said it in the Gamespot article, which was they're planning mass production in June and they want to release it this fall. Could be possible depending on you know COVID and how fast they can get things built. They want to have. At release, mm -hmm. like just shy of a million units, so could be fall, mm -hmm. could be winter, but they want to have it out it, for the holiday season. Well, there's a significant amount of computer parts right now whose price is through the roof, so hopefully that does not affect. Shall see, Braylon. Any final thoughts? Um, I'm excited for Splatoon. Yes, and I'm excited for the new Switch port dock thing. Were you, were you disappointed yeah. at all when you saw Splatoon and it said 2022? Yeah, yeah, I was. But hopefully that means it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. It better be, or we'll get them. The nice right. thing about Nintendo games like that is they rarely have like bugs or glitches. Like they sure. always function perfectly. Yeah, yeah they, have a, they have a system that works for sure. Mm -hmm. And normally their sequels are good. They are yeah. built on previous because they take forever to come out but like splatoon 2 light years better than splatoon oh i don't agree really i think fight 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 i love <laughs> splatoon 1 so much what splatoon i liked about was good it was everything was op and i thought that was fun it made games really chaotic mm -hmm. that like everything mm -hmm. was just super overpowered but this game is a little I more controlled <laughs> it is I, I agree with that i just think the gameplay is just a lot better yeah, but I agree. Like, as long as they, if they can fix all the quality of life features that we all want, that would go a long mm -hmm. way in Splatoon yeah. Three. Mm -hmm. And voice chat, a hundred percent. They need to just figure. Yeah, out. Oh my god, they got to figure that out somehow. Same, same price you think as yeah. the original when the Switch came out? Sixty bucks, probably. No, I mean uh, the new Switch. Oh, uh, I don't know. I would assume so. Which is what two ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the switch that they have now will go down to probably like one ninety nine. What, what name do you think they're going with for it? God knows. I keep seeing Super Switch everywhere. 
That would I actually would be that, but I, Super I Nintendo could, Switch. I could Super. see that being a well, thing. No, I've just seen the like the Super. I think the safest bet bet would bet would just be new uh, the new Nintendo Switch. That would be or the Switch 4K or something like that. Why do they do that? The new like the <laughs> so the dumb. new Pokemon Snap, yeah. new 3DS. <laughs> Get your new Nintendo. It's Switch. not the old one. It's because it's the new one, and then that's what the no, That's why we named it that. Don't you think that yeah. if you like brought that up in a pitch meeting, that somebody would be like, "Absolutely, we're not naming it the new Nintendo Switch." Like, well, what they start, what they started with the Wii. The Wii was named what it was named because it was a word that they could was pronounced the exact same in every language, and so when they went to the 3ds they said let's just do the new one i I think that they're thinking more of a worldwide yeah yeah whereas that's not how just about any other company that the word new you could translate Mm -hmm. it to every different language so exactly i would assume there's a word for super or close to super you have super mario you get whatever word you use for that (laughs) it could just be the apple situation where it's just they started Mm -hmm. having like the iphone 7 and then the iphone 7 plus and then now you have the normal phone, the, the plus, the S, yes, the S, or now that's Max, iPhone 12 Max. Maybe they yeah. just like, listen, we did the new 3DS. Now we're just going to do the new Switch. Every time we do a Pro version, we're going to call yeah. it the new one. Mm-hmm. Hey, it can't be worse than what Xbox has done. That's true. Next. Xbox, like, let's call everything X or S. Back to back to back to back to back. Yep. Like, okay, that's what we're doing. Oh, but we will see. Hopefully sooner. Obviously, I mean, if they... You would think they would announce it right before production, which is in June. So mm-hmm. maybe, you know, here in a couple months, we'll actually know what it looks like and when it's coming out and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's going to do it for us here. Again, we want to thank you all for listening. New episodes of the Log On Game podcast are right here every Friday at 3 a.m. Pacific time. So you can stay up all night if you want to just get our faces and our voices. That's what I do. Yep. I don't believe you. I don't do that. Uh, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, you could give us five-star rating. That helps us quite a bit. Go up and get more eyeballs and earballs seen. Uh, Ten. And then the algorithm because, then, you know, the, inter- the internet and technology and things. Um, again, if you want to get your questions or topics, and we are at Log On Games across the globe. We have Twitch. We have YouTube. So come hang out with us. Play some games. We auto stream all of our co hosts here, including Fluffy Monkey herself, Shibby, Robot Giggles, Marty, the whole the whole cast and crew here. Uh, we auto host, so even if we are not streaming, someone is. So go go find them, go support them, and, and do all that stuff. And that is going to do it for us here. We will be with you all again on Friday. Finger guns. Bye, Bye. friends.